sing a song just because it, it helps me calm my nerves a little bit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Amen. What do you do? All right, Mika. When you've done all you can, right. it seems like it's never enough. Oh, yeah. And what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone, all alone? Tell me what do you give? When you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you of your past tell me how to deal with the shame and how can you smile while your heart has been broken and filled with pain filled with pain tell me what do you give when you've given your all, and it seems like you right, can't make right. it through, right, child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after. of my life. I would like to thank Mother Blackwell for this opportunity. I would like to thank my pastor for allowing me to stand in his pulpit. And I would like to thank the other ministers on the roster. My spiritual mama's here. It always warms my heart whenever I see her face. To my natural mama, I love you too. And uh, I can't forget, I'm not going to do all that, the coffee and the sugar in my coffee and all that stuff. But to dig and for to my husband, God bless you. Thank you for supporting me all the time. I appreciate it. So when Terry texted me the theme, I think my only response was, wow, right? I said, wow, what a theme. And I began to just meditate on it. And her lesson scripture comes from Proverbs. Um, her theme scripture comes from Proverbs 31 and 17. It says, she girded her loins with strength and strengthen her arms. So I'm gonna touch on your theme a little bit, but I have to go where the Lord leads me, amen. I would like to start to say that women are unique and special creatures. We were born with a God-given tenacity. There is something God placed within us that allows us to endure under the worst circumstances. It has something to do with the role that we were created for. We were created to be a help meet, meaning we have the ability to meet every need that presents itself. We are resourceful, smart, we're life bearers, and my stomach is proof of that today. <laughs> we are empathetic, we are nurturing, we are love, and we are beautiful. But there is something extra special about a woman of God. She's in a class of her own. Not only is she all the things I stated before, but she is resilient. She is gifted, she is anointed by God to do not only the work that every woman does, but she is given the grace to also complete the work that God has given her. In the words of my pastor, she bad. 
There is nothing she can't do. She will get in the, up in the middle of the night and pray a covering over her family while all of them are still sleeping peacefully. She will go through that house and rub everything down with blessed oil and cast out the spirits that them bad kids and that crazy husband brought home that day and go back to sleep before her husband even turns over in the bed. She back. <laughs> then after she wakes up and gets ready for the day, if she has children, she prepares them for school. She makes everybody's lunch. She tries to get everybody some type of breakfast on the table and she drops the kids off to school and then heads to work. And while at work, she's dealing with devils on her job. Uh -huh. She's working three times as hard as everyone else, getting paid fractions of what her co-workers are getting. She's underpaid, overworked, unappreciated, yet because of the God in her, she still does that job to the best of her ability. She bad. She races to pick up her children, run to the grocery store to get something she forgot to get to dinner. She loads and unloads the children and gives them the speech. How many mothers know what the speech is? Before you even get out the car, you say, if you even touch something, it's going to be me and you. <laughs> and she does all this all the while trying to figure out how she's going to get what they need with what's in her bank account. She finally gets home. She unloads everything. She turns on the stove. She unpacks the groceries. She gets the kids settled. They're doing homework, and she starts dinner. Say it with me now, she back. All right. <laughs> she cooks dinner. The husband comes home. She feeds her family. She gets the kids ready for bed. She prepares the next day, and she caters to her husband. That's the PG version. Y'all know what I'm saying. Everything is finally calm, quiet. And she sighs and says, finally, some time for myself. And just as she begins to close her eyes, the Lord said, wake up. I need to talk to you. She bad. I know that that was a brief synopsis of what our lives can be like. But I want you to think for a minute, how is it possible for us as women to do all of that day in and day out, no break, no holiday, no vacation? How can we continue to manage our lives and our ministries? What do we need to sustain us? It seems like the men and women of God all over the world are growing weary. Their spirits are heavy. They are burdened down. They are spiritually, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. We all have some kind of burden that we carry around from day to day. Many have financial obligations that are weighing them down. Others have family sickness that's weighing them down. And some are contending with dysfunctional relationships. The list of burdens could go on and on. And the sad fact is that we all have something that puts us under enormous pressure or stress from time to time. One of the major tactics of the enemy is to try to wear you out. God gives us this insight in Daniel 7 and 25 where he informs us through prophecy that in the last days, one of Satan's tactics is to wear out the saints of God. There are two aspects to this. There is a spiritual wearing on the saints, trying to deplete our spiritual and emotional reserves through burnout and disappointment, anger and resentment, and too much busyness so we don't stay built up in God's word and prayer. Satan is trying to keep us from receiving the harvest that God has for us. The second aspect is that Satan is aware of is that we live in a body of flesh that can get physically tired or worn out. We tend to get busy with things that don't even involve God, things that he never even told us to do. And while we're busy doing the things he never told us to do, we're missing the very thing that he told us to do. So we have to be careful and use discernment on the things that we choose to add to our lives, the things that we choose to do. Make sure that it's God approved because the enemy will use that thing to wear you out. Amen. Sometimes Satan tries to use a big overwhelming issue against a person that just seems to never end. And no matter what you do or where you go, it's still there. Every time you turn around, it's still there. You peek around the corner and it's still there. Other times, Satan tries to use small things to continually aggravate and frustrate. Part of the strategy of Satan depends on your personality type. 
Part of it hinges from your childhood experiences and your adult life. Yes. Satan is no gentleman. His forces are not kind, mm -hmm. understanding, or considerate of your misfortunes. Mm -hmm. The enemy is always watching for an opportune time or a place where he can aggravate you right. and try to cause problems to wear you down. So true. Our pastor spoke this morning about what do you do when people get on your nerves? Right. And the whole church was like, yes, preach. And then he said, walk away and pray. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> walk away and pray was the word that he gave us today. But the truth is the enemy literally cannot wear you out. He can only try to make you think you will be worn out so you give up. His only power is to tempt you to give up. But ultimately, whether you give up or not is in your control. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as in common is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with temptation also make a way of escape, that you will be able to bear it. This is war, and war that is already won. So all you have to do is show up. And that's what the enemy doesn't want. He doesn't want you to show up because he knows that all you have to do is just step onto the battlefield because God already has a strategy that can't be defeated. He already has the intel and knows every move the enemy is about to make before he makes it. All it takes from us is one simple yet strenuous thing. Stand. Stand in the midst of adversity. Stand in the midst of heartache. Stand in the midst of exhaustion. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. This thing take, it takes heart, it takes courage, it takes unwavering fortitude. Meaning steadfast courage in pain or adversity. It means constant strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. It means constant mental and emotional strength in facing difficulties, adversity, danger, or temptation courageously. We have what it takes, people of God. We have to know who we are and whose we are. We serve a God that will never leave us or forsake us. We serve an Isaiah 41 and 10 God that says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We serve a Joshua 2 and 9 God. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither thou be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Wheresoever thou goest. We serve a Galatians 6 and 9 God. That says, let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We are the children of God. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer captives to fear. We have been sanctified and justified. We are the righteousness of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are chosen in love. We are gifted by God. We are victorious. Amen. Have your hands if you're victorious. We are victorious people, amen. We are strong. We are fighters. We're prayer warriors. We're heavyweights in the spirit. Yes. And guess what? So guess what? Yes. We win. Yes. We win. Yes. Don't give up now. Yes. Don't throw in the towel. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to miss the beautiful things that God has for you. Yes. You have to fight. Fight for your loved ones. Fight for your ministry. Fight for your marriage. Yes. Fight for your peace. Yes. Fight for your increase. Yes. Fight for your deliverance. Yes. Fight for your mind. You have to fight through those tears. You have to pray through your doubt. You have to love when they hate. You have to speak life when everything around you is dead. Fight like a woman, not just any woman, but a saved woman. Fight like Lydia and work hard in the church. Work hard for God's people. Fight like Ruth and leave your comfort zone. Follow after God and get in position to be blessed. Fight like Priscilla and study to show yourself a and lead others to Christ. Fight like Mary and burst that ministry. Nurture it, protect it, and when the time comes, let God's will be done with it. Fight like Hannah and fall on your face and cry out to God. Fight like the Samaritan woman. Humble yourself, accept responsibility, and get your 
you with little things. He will have you fighting the wrong enemy. You think that is something big. You think it's your spouse. You think it's your children. But the devil is something real small that you ain't even paying attention to. And as long as you're fighting the wrong enemy, you're never going to win. So you have to stop complaining. You have to stop crying. You have to step in faith. And you have to get on your knees and say, God, you show me. You show me. You show me what it is. Because the enemy's not my husband. The enemy's not my children. The devil is my enemy. And you said I got power over the enemy. You said I have authority over the enemy. So I'm going to walk in that authority. Machine. Watch that all 